Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Shadow Tactics by Antler Games. It plays one to six players, takes about 45 minutes to an hour per scenario, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game, you are going to be playing a one versus many style game in which a one side is going to be playing uh, with the Daimyo, the evil warlords are going to be competing against the Shinobi of the Shogun. So the Shinobi are a loyal group of uh, assassins attempting to protect the land evil daimyo and his warlords are in attempts to gather fame and power one player is going to be playing as the daimyo or the warlords and be basically selecting a tactical card in a reference area and the other players are also going to be doing the same it kind of goes back and forth in turns in which a player is going to play one of their tactics and then the uh sh the shogun or the warlords will get a chance to play theirs or pass another player will play theirs and it'll rinse back and forth until the one side the warlord slash um hick Kage or whatever is going to select one and then all the other players will select one as well you'll reveal them all you'll do the aspects of the cards what they say depending on whether you're focused or not and then you're going to attempt to complete different scenarios there's a story based mode and there's a sandbox based mode in which is going to be different tactical locations set up in feudal Japan as you're going along uh, one mission may be to escort certain people from one area to another another might be an assassination mission where you're trying to destroy the village leaders uh, one one could be a listening a tactical mission where you're trying to hear what the plans are of a specific battle. And of course, the final one is going to be something where you're going to be fighting against the main Hokage, the, the, the Grand Warlord, uh, that is trying to concoct his evil plans. Uh, if you're able to complete the mission, you'll move on. You'll gain certain currency as you progress, gaining new items and bonus unique actions that you can take called tool belt items. And of course, the coins can carry over or you can simply play one single match. There's also an expansion for this game which comes with some new modes such as the light and dark mode which you can like light candles and snuff out candles as the shinobi or of course there's also the snow based area in which you are going to see footprints so the guards are going to recognize footprints from the uh, shinobi as they go across the area and they're going to try and spot them that way there's new characters invested in the game such as a raccoon and a uh, noble uh, hero fearless noble hero uh, attempting to also aid in the shinobi's goal uh, and a bunch of other stuff. I'll go into detail as to what the game comes with and how it plays, the different tactical aspects of the game and how you're going to set up the board and all that. And then of course we'll come up for my review of the game. We'll talk about whether you should pick this game up or not and what you think of this unique tactical game that's also a bit of deduction as well. Welcome to Shadow Tactics the game and here is everything represented in both the base and expansion game and we'll go through all of it as much as I can. Firstly you're going to get miniatures for each of the different characters in the game and these are the characters associated card decks. You're also also going to be getting the different type of guard figures, whether they be spearmen, officers, samurai, uh, the different lord, or the kage-sama, uh, and they're all represented in blue, and they're in these spaces here. There's also status markers. There are the three basic ones, whether they be alert, or whether they be uh, stunned, or confused, or, or some of these more intricate ones, uh, ones that involve keys, uh, the targeting, and eavesdrop markers there. You're also going to be getting a bunch of cards, and uh, they're either going to range in the different health cards or action cards. Uh, health cards represented by the characters and their little health card base here. So as you can see, a non-wounded character and then a first wounded and a second wounded character. And you'll be using both of these to determine the health of each of the characters. Each character is also gonna get their own unique action cards or their action card deck associated by the color as well as the image represented for each of the different um, the different uh, shinobis, the different ninjas, you could say. Um, you're also going to be getting the Warlords deck as well. The Warlords are gonna come with a basic six cards as well as uh, based on the Warlord that you choose, there's going to be three different cards associated Set of cards for each of them that you can choose. So if I wanted this specific warlord, I would add these three cards here and I would remove the rest of these. And this would be my nine card action deck. There's also bonus cards, mainly tool belt or uh, you know, or the warlord bonus cards, which you're going to get at the beginning of the game. It'll tell you based on the scenario what you get, as well as how you can purchase them throughout the game. And they're represented by these little smaller cards and they have unique little actions that you can take. And then of course, the actions that your opponent can take after you utilize them. Uh, not only that, but you're also 
going to be getting a bunch of tokens, and the tokens can range uh, from uh, whether it be the silence of the night or some type of uh, ex explosion, whether it be a focus symbol. Uh, there's also going to be these raising alarm uh, tokens, which will also correspond to this alarm deck, indicating the number of rounds the game is going to be, and a bunch of other tokens to facilitate depending on the different scenarios uh, for the different campaigns. You're also going to be getting a ton of these tiles here. These tiles here are going to be represented in either day or nighttime. It's going to be the base game stuff. It's going to be single slotted, and they all fit together. As you can see, this is actually a bunch of tiles fit together based on the first scenario of the game. But with the expansion, it brings something new in, which is the snow tiles here. And you'll be utilizing those depending on the specific scenarios, as well as, of course, like gate tokens and, and, and whatnot as well. The last important thing to mention is you're going to have this board here. This is going to have uh, the different sides of the board represented, the either the A, the Daimyo side, or the Ninja's side. And depending on the number of players, is how many of these slots you utilize. So for instance, and I think it's like a one, two, and a three player game, you'll use these, and then four and five, and then uh, the full mode will use all of these. Um, and how it works is, is pretty simple. We'll start with just the basic idea of the game. After you've got your character set up based on the scenario, in most cases it's going to give you a certain number as the Daimyo, uh, where you'll be placing your guard out into the areas here represented in these little so these little spaces here and then the shinobis will be placing down onto the little areas represented by this little this little marker here and you can place them in any, any area you want uh, based on different scenario rules this one here specifically says that you have a certain number of rounds which is eight and you'll basically take eight of these cards at random and you'll make a deck out of them, removing the rest. And your objective is to defeat all of the guards here before the end of the round. The round is going to trigger the end once all the last card in here is, is triggered. At the end of every round, you'll draw one of these guys. Um, and how it works is pretty simple. There's a programming phase. Everybody's going to get those nine cards like I talked about. The rest are going to set aside. And then you're going to place them down one at a time. If the alarm isn't triggered, then the first person who's going to get a chance to go is one of the ninjas. And the ninjas will get to go ahead and select one of their action cards and place it secretly face down on the board. After that, then the uh, Daimyo is able to select, or the Warlord is able to select one of their action cards and place it down, or they can simply choose to pass, in which case the next player uh, is going to be able to select one of their action cards and place it on, on, on the board. And so if, if the Daimyo chooses not to place one down, then of course the next ninja will place one up here. Then maybe the uh, Daimyo is going to place one right there, in which case the last and final uh, ninja in a four-player game is going to go ahead and put one of those guys down. Now, if you're playing with a one or a two-player game, you might get additional ninjas. It'll tell you how many ninjas you get. So, and I think in a two-player game, the one player gets three ninjas, and the other player simply plays as the Daimyo slash Warlord character. And uh, it's going to look like this at the end of a programming step. After you've programmed all of your cards in, then you're going to execute. And you're going to be flipping these over one at a time. Before we get to that, let's talk about this board here. When moving, there's certain rules to follow, and ninjas are going to be allowed to move on these spaces only, uh, whereas the uh, warlord characters or the uh, daimyo characters are going to have to move into these spaces here. So if he wants to move from here to here, he'll have to go one and then two. And each of their cards will have unique actions to allow them to move. Another thing to note, too, is only three characters can fit in a space here, and they're either going to face outward, facing this field here, or they're going to face inward uh, facing these tiles here. Uh, the difference between them is A, if you're looking to see if an action is being performed in your field, or B, if you're looking to see if there's an action being performed in one of the bushes that you are adjacent to. So for instance, these guys are facing this way uh, in hopes that this ninja is going to make some type of action that is going to alert the guards of his or her presence. And if that happens, they're going to be utilizing these little status markers to symbolize that they have been alerted. And you're going to go ahead and place them just like this right there in the base. Uh, which will tell you that the guard has been alerted based on a ninja's actions, which is going to be based on these action cards here. Um, and the board could look something like this, where you have all the different characters in like that. There's certain rules, um, benefits or, or, or reductions, based on having multiple characters in specific areas, but no more than three can fit in a specific given uh, zone here. And ninjas are never going to be in these zones, only on the outsides here, and they can only move based on what their action cards tell them to do. 
So the first thing that will happen is, if there's no alarm that's been triggered, and in the first round there's not going to be one, you'll flip these over. You'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. And if there's nothing there, you'll just skip it. And then you're going to perform the specific action. So in this case here, this says it causes a commotion, which makes the alarm a little more difficult to, to trigger. Uh, and they might give this, uh, this might allow another player to be focused. So you might give this guy the ability to focus. Check to see if there's a card here, there's not. Then you move on to the next one and you'll flip that over. And then you're going to perform this action. And there's a ton of different actions in the book. If you actually go ahead and take a look at this little rule book here, it will illustrate all the different actions for ninjas. And there's a ton of them, right? You could be moving or killing units. You could be stunning or distracting them or luring them away, causing a commotion, uh, focusing a different character, refreshing your hand size, because once you play these cards, they're going to be removed for that round up until you gain them back from a refresh action. You can heal, you can steal keys, you can rush. There's a ton of stuff. And that also goes with the... Uh, uh, the bad guy as well, the daimyo actions. You could patrol or order uh, guards to move around if you have specific units. Like, for instance, this is an officer, and officers can uh, specifically order units that are two spaces away, one and two, one and two, uh, one and two, to move in certain directions on the board. If a officer is not within range of a guard, then that guard will not be able to move. And there's just a bunch of different rules, like there's a ton of different modifiers and actions you can take a look at. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail as to how all of those go, because there are so many of them. But regardless, you're gonna go ahead and flip these cards over. And here, we'll go ahead and take this one here and flip it over, and then perform these actions here. And this one's gonna let you spawn a guy, this one will let you specifically move or order a character, in which case maybe he'll move this guy over, oh, I don't know, over just like that. And then finally, the last character is going to get a chance to go. Uh, actions that have a little symbol like that means that they can be spotted. It's like a visual action. They're, they've kind of gotten through the bush a little bit. If it doesn't have that, they're going to be able to do whatever that action is freely. Uh, if you trigger a guard to be alerted, then that means he's going to be prepared to check the bushes in front of him or the space in front of him at the end of the round. And if anybody's there, he's going to damage them, whether it be um, one or two ninjas and whether it be multiple guards or not. In certain scenarios, uh, the Daimyo is going to gain victory points as well. It just depends on the scenario that you are playing. Uh, after you've gone ahead and executed every single action that is on the board, including any bonus actions. And for instance, uh, if you wanted to on your turn when playing one of your cards, you could perform a bonus action as well. You'll put it face down just like you would uh, next to the, the card that you're placing. And after you perform that, you could perform this one, in which case you could do that bonus action. And then you give a, your opponents a rebuttal. They can do this action specifically. If you're playing with two players, one player is going to control all these guys. Otherwise, each player is individually going to control their own unique uh, shinobi slash ninja. Uh, the end phase of the game is, is pretty quick and pretty easy. You're going to check to see if the alarm triggers. You're going to go ahead and flip this over. Uh, based on how many of these alarm bells have been flipped over, whether it be by alerting an enemy or by an action card uh, alerting one. And if it does, this will flip this guy over. In which case, the uh, Daimyo player is going to be able to play red cards in the beginning of the round. And, or play a black card. You have to always play a card here as the, uh, as the Warlord character or the bad guy uh, whenever an alarm is triggered. Uh, triggering an alarm is very powerful for that player because it gives them a specific unique benefit. Uh, and of course, if the alarm is not triggered, maybe there's not enough, this will simply uh, get discarded and it might give you a unique action for the next round, whether it be to uh, increase or decrease the next variable of the next alarm phase. Then you're going to check to see if any victory conditions have been made. You'll adjust tokens. For instance, any distracted or stunned units will either become calm or they will turn to alert. So, for instance, if this character were to be stunned, at the end of the round, you remove the stun and now he's alert because you basically bonked him on the head. And then after he's been bonked and dazed, he wakes up and he realizes, oh, there's somebody here, so I'm alert. If you distracted him, however, maybe you moved him over here and then you distracted him as well. He's basically just going to think, oh, it was some birds and he will not become alert. Uh, and you'll, any other little unique uh, modifiers may switch as well. Uh, players will regain any discarded action cards if they use a refresh action on their turn, and then you're going to discard the rest of these guys here and start the next round. And the game keeps going like that until eventually either A, the victory conditions are complete, or B, all of the cards in this round have been removed. There's certain unique victory conditions for each side, depending on the scenario. There's a ton of different unique tokens that you're going to be utilizing throughout the game, and of course boards as well, but that's the 
the basic premise of it. Place the cards down, flip them over, enact the actions, whether it be movement through certain areas, whether it be killing and removing these guys and dropping dead bodies. Thusly, when another guard comes in that area and sees the dead body, he's going to get rid of it and become alerted, knowing that one of his friends has been removed. Um, or whether it simply be making an action as a ninja and going across a certain area, alerting a guard, or being smart, sneaky, and silent, and coming from behind and doing a kill action and removing the ninja. And then, of course, hiding the body is another action. So if he killed this ninja and put a body there, he can spend another, he can use another action to hide that body before a guard comes in to see what happened to his friend Bob. And now Bob's missing and there's no body, so he's not alerted. <laughs> and that's the basic premise of the game. It's tactics mixed with a little bit of deduction or deductive logic. Where are the players going to be placing? What are they going to be doing? What's that guard's objective this round? Is he going to be spawning units or trying to attack my guys? Is he trying to set up a trap for me later so that on the last round I would move my blue guy into an area knowing that I might get spotted and then automatically trigger, trigger that alarm, uh, which is definitely not beneficial. Uh, and of course, the different scenarios involved in the game as well. Like I said before, you can play as the full campaign in which you're going to go throughout this full mission booklet. This mission booklet talks about all the different characters. It talks about all the different campaigns and you can continue to go through up until you fight the end of the Kage Samak. If you can, if you can manage to beat him, he's like the big, big baddie here. Um, uh, there's a couple other things too, uh, which I'll briefly touch on in the review more so, but there's these spaces here, which will potentially cause uh, footprints when ninjas walk over them in the expansion. And thus, if guards see them, they'll get extra movement. Uh, there's also the night and day uh, tokens or icons. Basically, at, at nighttime, it's going to benefit the ninjas. The ninjas are going to try and make those uh, stay dark, whereas the guards will turn them back to light so that they can see what's going on. Um, and that's pretty much it. There's a lot of stuff in this game. There's a whole explanation for every single character and all the different cards that they have and how they can be utilized, as well as the bad guys and the good guys, and of course, the expansion to the game as well. This is the new version of the game Shadow Tactics, which is uh, definitely different than the original rules. I even went and looked at the original stuff just to see the differences. And this is a completely different style. Uh, same same style of game, but a completely different mechanisms, uh, different way of playing the game. I uh, will come up and I'll discuss what I think about the game, whether you guys should pick this little game up, and uh, basically where you can find it on Kickstarter right now. Shadow Tactics is a tactics game, yes. It's one of those games where you're going to take actions back and forth, but it's a very unique one. It almost feels kind of like a hidden movement game, even though movement isn't technically hidden. And that's because you're utilizing a board that is going to allow the uh, big baddie to play one action when he or she chooses to, um, and everybody else is going to play down their actions as well. And you're not going to know what everybody is trying to do. You kind of have an idea based on the scenario. You know for a fact that your objective is to uh, get inside the location and defeat the big baddie without alerting too many guards, or uh, you're trying to defeat all the guards in the area to rescue the civilians, or even utilize the civilians to help you remove dead bodies. There's a whole bunch of different things that you're attempting to do, and that the bad guys kind of know that you're trying to do, but it's in what order you're trying to do them, and how you're trying to get away with doing them. Uh, this game is, is so unique for a tactics game that it's one I'm instantly interested in picking up. Uh, this game here has beautiful, high quality components, beautiful artwork. Everything is top notch. This is uh, what I believe to be, well, I know to be a prototype version of the game. All the pieces right now are, uh, of course, not going to be the exact final replicated version, uh, but what is here is brilliant. Just seeing the packaging that they brought this game in to show me uh, indicates how uh, deeply involved they are with making sure that this game has very, very high quality, high production value, and beautiful artwork that sustains it all into this wonderful world. You feel like you're part of this world when you're playing this tactical game. You know that there's things you want to do and how you want to utilize them. You're working together as the shinobi trying to dictate to each other, okay, this is what we want to do. Uh, you have to speak widely and openly when discussing certain things, no whispering, so that the warlord is able to kind of um, know what the general plan is. So you also have to be smart in choosing the words you say and the tactics you're trying to do in order to get through and succeed 
succeed in your mission. <laughs> uh, and of course, you as the bad guy, if you're playing the one person versus the many, you need to utilize your cards as best as possible. Yes, you get more actions, but you only get one of them, and when you play it, dramatically matters. How you move your opponent's cards, or your own characters, or spawn new ones, is going to also determine whether you win or lose this game. Uh, you can make this game dramatically difficult for yourself if you choose to play incorrectly, or you can make it a good fighting uh, chance if you play in the best possible way. And, and that's what it comes down to, learning when to play what and how to play what, um, and also deducing what your opponents are going to do. You'll have an idea, like I said, and you're also going to get this wonderful chart here. Uh, if you're playing as the bad guy specifically, you'll get to see what each of the characters can do, and based on what they have previously done, you can kind of etch them off, kind of like Clue, and you'll have an idea of like, okay, this is the four cards they have left, and they need to do this, so likely they'll use this card, but when will they use it in what area? That's kind of all stuff to debate, so you have to kind of plan ahead for that. <laughs> this game has a twist and turns. You're, you're never going to feel safe in this game, either playing as the bad guy or the good guy. You never know if you're going to successfully make the right choice until everything is kind of played out, or if people are running low on cards that they need to refresh. <laughs> this game has that aspect of tactics. Yes, you are tactically moving with an action or actions from one space to another, but because of that unique and innovative surprise mechanic of what's going to happen when and what bonus actions are going to be used, you're always on your toes. And it works so well with the theme of this game. This theme and the style of gameplay is beautifully put together. You really feel like you are specifically trying to get this objective done with this character. And you have this honed like care to making sure that your character is able to do what they need to do. Um, otherwise, they're going to be dramatically hindered and you're going to rely on your allies to kind of help you out. And as the Hokage, the bad guy, the warlord uh, the leader that you're playing, and that's because there's many warlords that you can choose from and the big bad guy is the Hokage. That's why I kind of keep interspacing between them. Uh, it's, it's all about choosing the right character for the right job and uh, the right uh, bad guy is going to make a big difference in how you place your characters out and which type of characters you upgrade to. And you can upgrade your units or promote them as well, which is also a really unique and interesting aspect of the game. Uh, not only that too, but you have the expansion, which comes with two new unique characters, which is fun. I mean, I really like the raccoon. I think he's super cute. I also like the fact that you've integrated the different types of playstyle, whether it be snow covered area where you can actually see where the shinobi are moving if you're a guard and kind of like pace that out and use that to your benefit, or whether it be the lights on, lights off where it's dark and all of a sudden you've lost the light and now you need to go turn back on as a guard. Was it a ninja who did it or was it the, the wind? You don't know. And uh, that all plays a big role in the expansion of the game, the unique formats. It also comes with a bunch of campaign missions that you play with. There's a ton of unique tokens that are used throughout this game depending on what you're doing. Are you trying to gather civilians? Are you trying to learn more information? Is it a kill mission? Is it an escort mission? They're not all the same. You don't just feel like you're, you're moving around killing dudes and, and that's it. Uh, they actually do have unique and interesting scenarios for each of the different campaign missions as you go along. So it's not just kind of like you're fight, fight, fight. Okay, we're done next round. Fight, fight, fight next round. And that's fine and well and good for certain games. But for tactic games, I love the idea of each campaign feeling different and having unique objectives put into them. And this game does that beautifully. Uh, people who are not going to like this game are people who are not going to be wanting to deep think. This is a game that takes a while to set up as well. There's a lot of components. There's a lot to teach. There's a lot of different actions. And as you learn the actions, it gets to be rather simple. You know, I mean, if I grab these cards here, most of them I'm, I'm going to know. And this is a focus on here. It has a little symbol. This is a little a commotion marker. Uh, this hides a dead body. And you'll know that you walk into a specific area. You need to hide that body before a guard sees it. Uh, you want to misdirect something somebody or distract them? Are you going to sneak and move across a certain area? And there's certain areas the ninjas can go through and they can't go through based on the cards that you're playing. Are you going to attempt to kill a uh, guard with sound? Or are you going to try and do it silently? Uh, and so on and so forth. And each deck for each of the different characters functions differently. Some don't have a refresh, some do. Others will get refreshed when they take damage. Uh, it's just a big mixture of how you want to play the game with what character and to make sure everything feels different and unique. Uh, there's going to be a ton of replayability in this game, even if you play the campaign mode over again after playing it the first time. Um, but yeah, so th that's and that all plays, I know it sounds like a positive, but it, it, it kind of can be a negative for certain players because it's so deep and there's a lot of things that you can do. Uh, you have to kind of maintain the chess-like ideas of what I'm going to do next, what cards will I have, and can I get to be where I want to be with what is available to me. And if you mess up along the way, you're going to be like, 
oh wow, I, I now I'm going to lose a round, maybe even two rounds to try and do what I want to do because I didn't play correctly the previous round. And that can get kind of frustrating for certain players. Um, playing as the one player, obviously, against a, a group of people may bother certain people. So you have to decide you know, what team works best for you. Do you want to play as that big baddie where it's just you versus the world? Or you want to play as the group of Shinobi attempting to work together silently without giving that player any, any kind of heads up, which is also nice. Two different game modes is kind of nice to separate players who don't like one or another. I would always prefer to play as the big bad guy, um, but I know friends who would prefer to play as just the shinobi. Um, overall, though, a solid game. It's beautiful, well-designed, tons of different replayability. This is a game for you tactics lovers out there that also like that you know, hidden movement games, unique objective games, something I would strongly suggest taking a look at. This is the second campaign. I know that they, I think they previously made a game for Shadow Tactics, but it plays way differently. This one plays differently. It feels differently, has a bunch of different components uh, and it's different it's, it's different in, in, in a lot of ways. I looked at a video previously to see the differences between these and the fact that this also has a solo mode as well as an expansion. Uh, even those people who previously backed Shadow Tactics, uh, this might be still something that you would like to take a look at. In my opinion, this feels and would pl play better. I haven't played the previous one. <laughs> better than that one though, just based off of watching how they were played. Uh, but you guys can tell me what you think down below in the comment section. That's all I got for you though. Thumbs up, Shadow Tactics solid game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Shadow Tactics. If you're interested in the game, it's on Kickstarter. The link is down below in the description. You can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the subscribe bell button as well as the button there and you'll get notified for the rest of the videos we put out. If you're interested in this type of review, maybe you'll be interested in more of our reviews. The thing I noticed too is the complexity rating on this. It says 2.5 out of 5, which is medium. I'm very nervous to see their hard mode because uh, this one was pretty complex for me specifically, but uh, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe I can get my mind jogging with some of their new complex games that they come out with. <laughs> also, my wife, Callie, her game Moonshell, a mermaid game is coming out March 2nd, which is next month here and if you're interested there'll be a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and take a look at her game it's a puzzle game it's definitely lighter than this one uh gateway style a uh, game that involves kind of like a candy crush meets tetris meets sagrada and tiny towns all kind of thrown in together and you're collecting seashells and forming patterns and scoring objective points based on your mermaid board and your mermaid powers that you can utilize the game goes from super easy mode for very young kids to play all the way up to complex mode for masters like me and her to play if you're interested though like i said. Also, go ahead and check out our Discord. Check out our Patreon. Thank you, Patreon people. I really appreciate it. We have a live stream every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST uh, where we play games on Facebook just like this one. And if you're interested in seeing games like this, go ahead and check that out. And of course, we thank you so much and look forward to uh, shadow tacticking with you next time.